once. For the whole thing. Uh, this is the build OGM call on Tuesday, September 21, 2021, which is the equinox. So and I hope everybody's tomorrow. feeling, I hope everybody's feeling very balanced. Yeah, that's true. Actually, it's tomorrow, but generally the 21st is when I like mark it. But are you feeling a sense of e equanimity, balance? No? Okay. Yeah, me neither. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, so generally, uh, there's kind of a small cascading sequence of things, which is it would be nice for us to have a better image of where we're heading together, which means I need to finish transcribing my drawings into diagrams.net diagrams so that we can make them easily available as layers of a mosaic of a kind of a vision of why we're doing what we're doing and how we're doing it, which then would cascade down into uh, project teams working on different parts of this, which would cascade over into fundable projects that are tiles in the mosaic, which would then spill back into Build OGM, which if it grew, if we should be so fortunate that, that, that Build OGM starts to actually get a, a little bit unwieldy and bigger, we would then immediately sort of subdivide into different project groups that could then manage different parts of, of this, this thing that we're, that we're sort of building. So, um, um, so. Yes. Uh, it's two things. One of them yes. is you don't actually have to start at the top of that. You can start anywhere in and, and flesh it out from there, right? Um, another thing is we could literally do that in the next 15 minutes. We could literally grab diagrams.net and start stacking uh, what you just said. Um, and I have the diagrams as drawings in uh, JPEGs, yep. I guess. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got a stack of JPEGs, which we could use and we could easily crowd sort. And diagrams likes multi-user, right? Um, it, yeah. Sort of like Miro. I've never done diagrams multi-user. Uh, yeah, it, it works fine multiplayer. Um, the, it was the like there that that got me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, it doesn't have a preference. Um, it. it uh, is it software animated? Isn't software conscious? Uh, some of it is. Some of it's not. Actually, it's it's increasingly becoming. I mean, there's all sorts of interesting articles about that. And, and then I tried to transform it users like multiplayer uh, diagrams on that and that's kind of true kind of not i love multiplayer um stuff i, I nobody I, likes software nobody likes software well Maybe. everybody hates software anybody like, in the call like software? software raise your hand if you like software on on balance like if you yeah, add up no. the pluses and the minuses if you add up the pluses and the minuses it, it lands positive for me most of the time even 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 things with cranky interfaces often land positive because I'm there using the freaking thing because it's doing something I actually need. Maybe it's one of the, I, I, I love software in general and hate the, a lot of software in particular. <laughs> I like that a lot. That expresses it well. And, and maybe also, um, you know how uh, some kings would take little bits of venom for a long time to become immune to the venom? Maybe maybe my exposure to software through my 12 years as a tech analyst listening to pitches and trying a whole bunch of software because I used to say, it's my job to waste my time so you don't have to. Um, that was a little sort of fun pitch line now and then. Uh, maybe that's desensitized me to just how awful the whole experience is. And I'm, I have like a, an unknown sort of softness for fondness for cranky software. Who knows? Um, but I know a lot of people who hate software in general. So. And it was King Mithrates, yes. Thank you. Um, and it's also a plot point in the Baroque cycle. And, uh, and in Princess Bride. Princess Bride, that's where I was going next. That's exactly where I was going next. <laughs> 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 and, I, and, I, and I can't do Vizini's uh, uh, little speech about now you're wondering if I've taken if you I've first switched the glasses, so I so I'm not going to you know, do not ever engage in a land war in Asia. Jerry, I wonder uh, if you've got drawings already. Um, do they need to be uh, recreated in diagrams on that? Um, uh, my instinct is that that would be helpful because we would like to add and move things around. 
um, to what I drew. I mean, I did an organizational bubbles, right? <clears throat> and I thought later of a couple of bubbles that aren't on the diagram. Like, I don't think, I'm not sure Lionsburg is in that, is in that constellation. And Lionsburg ought to be in that constellation. And then the things kind of on the far side of Lionsburg should be a little bit on the far side of Lionsburg, like OFC, right? Um, and, and so that, that would be interesting to be able to, to kind of add in. So I think, yes. Um, I don't want to stop this conversation right now to go do that, but I'm interested in crowdsourcing the drawings uh, into something we can kind of uh, update and, and keep using. So I, I love the idea. I kind of want to go around and see a little bit what priorities we sense. So my, um, I have in front of me, so, so, so here's an update. Um, I had a, I've had a couple conversations with Jim Rutt. Jim Rutt is uh, the, the sort of the, the spark of game B at this point, but back in the day, he was the CEO of Network Solutions. He's kind of a, a, a an old, older white guy with white hair and kind of this rah, rah, rah demeanor. Um, and but but with a really nice heart and like lots of interesting instincts about what to do and how to go about doing it. Who's made his fortune back in the day because he sold Net Solutions, uh, NetSol uh, to Verisign, I think on the day of the crash for 50% above you know, uh, the market value of their stock. So that went that, that, that actually closed and went well. Uh, and then he's done a few other things since then, but he's become kind of a, a bit of the center of game B, which is clearly an OGME community that we would love to help and be connected to and all that. And we were just sort of talking and, and, and brainstorming on stuff because uh, we liked each other's uh, sort of thinking. And at the end of the last call last week, either Thursday or Friday, <clears throat> he's like, hmm, this may be coincidence, I'm not sure, but, um, uh, at noon today, I sent off a letter to one of the entities we were going to invest in, <clears throat> and um, uh, and so back on record. Um, also, uh, my <clears throat> my old friend uh, Marie Bierde, uh, who uh, long ago was with um, Qualcomm and then uh, kind of retired out. Um, she is really energized about um, some of these things and helping build some part of this. So she's helping me look at the proposal and figure out you know, uh, what it is. And we've spent a couple of calls uh, in the last couple of days looking at kind of the bigger picture. What is the, what, what, and I'm gonna miss exactly framing it, how she's looking for it, but she's trying to figure out uh, what is the focus and what are the boundaries of, of this quest so that it can be uh, not chewing on everything, which I appear to like to do. Um, well, you know, weaving the world is an attempt to digest the world, but it's an attempt to do some very specific things while digesting the world. So I think the, I think that the process and actions are really specific. Um, but I think that the, the, the scope of activity is pretty huge. Um, so, so it does kind of get pretty big, pretty quickly. Any, any thoughts or comments or recommendations or suggestions besides talk to uh, Lauren and uh, Mr. Bovo? Um, about the grant proposal or? Uh, yes, and that structure. And then we'll go back to sort of build OGM framing. Uh, can you about to jump in? A question. Um, what is oh, Sorry, it was Mark Carranza. Uh, but you're muted. We can't actually hear you. So it sounds like you're pantomiming, which is really entertaining, actually, Hank. Um, go ahead, Mark. Uh, a question. What is weaving the world? Hmm. Such a good question. So, so in a call uh, a month ago now, I don't remember, I'm bad with dates. Pete asked a really good question. He said, is OGM an organization or is it a movement and a hashtag? And I kind of ended up at the end of that call with like less organization, more movement hashtag. So then what on earth, God damn it, am I pitching to anybody to fund? And then, then as things sort of materialized in the mists, I was like, you know, what we kind of need or what I think we need, and I'm, totally happy to take a, a better tack, but this is really sort of framed up in my head well, um, is a show that looks, smells, it like walks like a duck, talks like a duck, looks like one of the now probably a million podcasts and blogs out there. And if anybody knows what's happened to the semantics of vlog and podcast, because there appear to be a lot of podcasts that are now not audio only, that are video and audio, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what the, what the actual moniker for these things is going to become, you know, 10 years down the road, but um, on the surface, and, and I'm using this above ground, below ground kind of metaphor, which we've been kind of using here a bit, but above ground, it looks and smells like a normal podcast meet, which means it has episodes, it has an intro and an outro. It looks a little bit more professional than the videos that I upload daily uh, from our calls here, which are in fact 
conversations that with a little bit of framing would look and smell just like a podcast. <clears throat> and, and anybody watching our stream, and there's a, you know, there's a couple dozens of people who are actually downloading and watching our, our, our videos, um, would be getting a more organized version of that. But this one would be called Weaving the World with a goal toward um, going and visiting people whose ideas are helping fix the world's problems and connect up the world. And there's a lot of those trying to do it. And I had this idea in the shower this morning uh, in the Howard Zinn people's history kind of approach uh, where, where the, the, books, the book's concept is, hey, let's go talk to the people who got squished in the process of doing this. So a, a bit of the roadmap for weaving the world would be not to go to the like older white guys who have good ideas of whom there are plenty but to go to other people and try to be of service to them uh, and kind of to avoid intellectual property issues, but also because it's interesting to do some, at, the, at least at the beginning, to go do original interviews and to go sit with people and sort of process things. Uh, and then I think, I think a piece of what led to Jim saying, hey, um, what, what could you do with 25 grand was I was showing him how when I show up to a conversation, I'm not showing up with a blank canvas. I'm showing up with a whole bunch of stuff already about the person, their thoughts, and their context. And so as I take notes during a particular call, I'm clicking that together. And then when I post-process and when other people post-process, and when it's not just me at the fungus face with one tool, but it begins to become collaborative, I think really good things start to happen. I think that I think that he could he could start to imagine. First, I realized that most people don't have this understanding of what it's like to have a context that's actually durable and usable over time. Like I'm, I'm having such an unusual experience and I take it so for granted that I don't come back to this point, right? So, so we go talk to uh, uh, Matsukato or something like that. Um, and uh, the history of technology and who funded it and all that, I just have a ton of stuff and it's not nearly as pretty as her, as her book lays it out. So, and I haven't read her book. Um, so a piece of that would be how to arrange it, how to improve it, but I'm not starting from scratch, right? Um, and so weaving the web is above ground and then below ground, we're doing ogm -y things with the materials of that sequence of calls and everything else that's an asset on the, out on the web. And we're trying to feed the big fungus because leaf cutter ants can't, you know, can't uh, metabolize leaves, uh, but, um, uh, but they, uh, they feed the tribe by collaboratively uh, putting together uh, all those kinds of, you know, uh, the nut nutritious bits, the tasty bits. Um, sorry, April was distracting me with a, a ping, um, which is not urgent. Um, and so that, that's kind of the, the setup. And then, and then the big fungus is our particular framing of what is this generative commons that we're trying to feed? Someone else might call it something else, but if over the short term and then definitely the long term, if other people wanted to have shows, either existing shows or newly framed shows that also want to feed the same fungus, then we're like, then we're rocking and rolling because Weaving the World would be one of many different entities that is focused on how do we build the shared knowledge base? And it's knowledge base is a terrible uh, framing for it. And knowledge management is, is bad. But by the way, I'd like to absorb all the people who've given a damn about knowledge management for the last 40 years and been frustrated and offer them something brand new to walk into. So, uh, so then, then we need a bunch of things to frame what that is. Like weaving the world needs to look and smell like a regular podcast. So there's a bunch of things there. And I'm working on a project plan to make that actually look like a, like a, like a thing that has a project that, that needs resources and some people to work on different parts of it. And some parts of that are the things that an early grant could help stand up. Mark Antoine, and then Pete. Uh, yeah, the, the within the world for me, uh, sorry, I'm going to come up with my own perspective on this, even though this is Jerry's space. <laughs> uh, it's not, it's, a, it's, our, it's our collaborative space. This is just my particular weird little vision. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the way I understand it, at some point we had a long, conference about what is OGM and why is OGM. And at some point, one sentence that stuck to me was this, you know, we're connecting the connectors, connecting ideas, connecting people, but connecting the connectors. But the, re the it's there's a whole Russian dolls of so that, right? We're, a lot of us are working on tools so that we can connect connectors so that they can connect ideas and that's weaving the world so that we can connect actions and that's a collective action to quote unquote uh, save the world or at least have a 
more uh, better coordinated response to global crisis. So, 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 so there's all these levels of so that. Uh, and what to do with the money when you speak about leaving the world, that's kind of the, the, the third layer, right? The uh, connecting the ideas. And there's uh, what um, Vincent is doing with... Uh, oh. of, uh, yeah, it, it's very much connecting projects more, but it's also connecting teams and connectors. But I think that the, having the whole, how do we connect ideas well? Because a lot of people have been trying that. And connecting ideas is not that easy, and especially with the uh, balkanization and, and, and polarization. So how do we have methodologies? And very much OGM is a community of practice, community of practice of connectors. And one idea I tried to push is that one thing to do with the money of course, there's the events of weaving the world, and that's valuable. It's, a, it's another layer. But in the connecting the connectors kind of closer layer, there's OGM as a lab. As a, we're a community of practice of connectors and tool builders for connectors. And so that we can exchange what tools really help the, those connectors and can the uh, connectors tell us what their needs are for tools to do their work better. So uh, the whole laboratory, let's try things together and let's learn from one another on needs and aims interaction. So for me, these are all the nested layers of so that and the connection between them. And I think this, this is what we need to articulate well in terms of what's OGM and what's the project and what would we do with that money? Everything you said, absolutely, totally agree. Um, and essential to the process. Um, and, I and I think you're right, sort of the, the interface between connectors is a, is a piece of it. And then some connectors are mavens and some connectors connect you to mavens. And some of the mavens are the ones who know where the bits, the tasty bits are and how to wire them together. The connectors don't always know that. The connectors are often conveners and facilitators, but not necessarily, uh, don't, don't always have the perspective on the activity. Sometimes they do, some, uh, often they don't. Of often they're like, just really good gregarious people who create trusted space and then a bunch of people show up who are doing good work. Um, it, var it, it varies. Uh, Pete? Um, thanks, Mark Antoine, for, um, for that. Um, I, it's, there's a kind of a maybe, a, I, I think of it as a continuum kind of OGM as a philosophy is, is one way and OGM as a lab is kind of in between, you know, philosophy and OGM as an organization that has particular goals. I like the lab framing. Um, I think I actually like the philosophy framing better, but <laughs> I think that's, it, it maybe takes it too far. Um, uh, I, I I, I, a quick note, I, I made a note to myself, I'm going to paste it in chat. Um, um, so we, we got excited kind of talking about, oh, let's diagram all the things instead of let's dashboard all the things, you know, and, and we should do both of those. Um, and I also want to make the point, one of the, one of the things I feel like we do is like, oh my God, if we only had a dashboard, then this would all make sense. Um, so really diagrams and dashboards are tools and artifacts around which we do the thinking and doing and deciding, but the thinking and the doing and the deciding is actually the, the precedent activity. That's what, that's what we have to be doing. Um, so, and we're doing a great job of it here, I would judge for what it's worth. Um, uh, I would also judge that we're doing a great job of in the moment, thinking and doing and just thinking and deciding at least. And we have a habit, a really bad habit of having, you know, this kind of thinking and, and deciding scroll off into the, into the past. Um, so I am reminded of a, a saying um, by, uh, by an old philosopher um, that I had to hear this week and I did not like hearing it. Um, uh, real artist ship. Um, so <laughs> uh, we're, we're pretty good at dabbling in the arts. Um, uh, me personally, I, I could do a lot better job of shipping things um, and perhaps OGM could do a lot better job of shipping things too. Um, agreed, and we don't have a rhythm or a process or, or, or those things in place. And, and I, I, in defense of 
dashboards in particular, I don't know that I've ever thought dashboards will solve everything, but I know that there's been a demand from the very get-go to see ourselves, like who the heck is in this community and what do they care about? And a dashboard is one way to get there. Um, and it's a really useful way. Uh, and so we've gone 18 months without, you know, being able to see ourselves as a community. And then the diagrams are a way of seeing our path um, and seeing, uh, and, and if I had my druthers, the people layer and the organizational layer of the diagrams would actually be fed automatically by the dashboard, would be just a view in the dashboard and would be manipulable and viewable. And, and you know, we, we could sort of say, uh, and, and Vincent is sort of kind of close to that in the sense that he has different kinds of views of an org, one of which is the network view, which is a really simple like rubber band effect uh, view of, of you know, uh, org, orgs in a neighborhood. But, um, but, but that could easily get um, one step more sophisticated and be the kind of layer of, of diagramming that we're thinking about. Uh, although f frustratingly from our conversation when I presented the, the five layers, like it seems really hard to figure out what damn tool to actually use to see five layers in three dimensions, where where when you when you want to look at one layer, it's high functioning at a, at, as a flat diagram because awesome, and when you want to see how these things interrelate, they can go into three dimensions and you can see the connections between the layers. That that simple thing seems to actually be really hard to instantiate. Um, yeah, and and yet, yes. Um, Speaking as a product developer, that kind of thing is really easy to prototype around, right? So we haven't we haven't just sat down on our butts and said, "Okay, I can't you know I can't uh, visualize this in four dimensions." Oh, I'm so sad. It's like, dude, just you know, just start doing it in 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 piece parts, and then you've at least made the progress towards the goal of of doing it right. Totally agree. And my goal is if we collectively think that that's an interesting and important feature to have, then let's describe it as a tile, as a project tile in the mosaic, and let's get it funded as a tile and let's figure out who would like to, who, who feels like building it in a way that fits the rest of whatever it is we're using, <clears throat> you know, whatever graphics tool we think we're using and, and whatnots. Um, what are the interchanges and how does that work? And, and, and then that becomes a little piece in the actual technical, socio-technical infrastructure that we're helping build. And that, that makes a lot of sense to me is, is like, okay, there's a bunch of stuff that we each of us wish we had, um, a lot of which is describable as software. How does that translate into project plans, which are then fundable? Because I'm, I'm interested in turning this from an all volunteer activity into actually a way that many of us can, can make a living while feeding the fungus. And so that when people ask us at a party, so what do you do? You can say, I feed the fungus. Um, Mark it's a good conversation makes... starter, no? Sorry, go ahead, Pete. Um, <laughs> who, who else gets to say that? It's, like, it's better than... than uh, we'll need t-shirts and, and caps. I feed the fungus. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. It's, it's better than... Uh, then uh, I, I follow the, the pheromone trail. Um, yeah. Left, left behind by my... My predecessor and you definitely don't want i follow chemtrails that's bad <laughs> um marka antoine makes a good point in chat uh that one of the things that we do um is that that as we play with our our tools they don't talk to each other very well so that um so that we can't accumulate uh uh, and build on decisions. i think i think that's kind of true um i also would um uh point out flotilla flotilla is actually doing a, a you know a, a semi-decent job of kind kind of at least working on the idea of knitting together tools um i i think um the the top level thing for me is that uh i feel like we're being lazy um and uh, it's kind of a societal thing that we've got, um, I feel like, in the, in the 2020s at this point. Um, uh, everybody likes to be doing, everybody likes to be being active um, and generating ideas. And um, the, the culture has gotten to be where it's like, it's cool to like expound, right? Um, but the, the back to the real artist ship, there's, there's a, there's a thing that is really uncomfortable and hard to do where you say, okay, I'm going to stop having so much fun generating cool ideas and I'm going to sit down and build something. 
and you know you 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 take out your blank paper or your empty text editor and you start typing code and you're going I don't know what I'm doing this sucks I hate it um, I want to do something fun instead I'll go to an OGM call and, and we'll chit chat about you know the state of the world and we'll hand ring and we'll come up with brilliant ideas and all feel good together and stuff like that and there's that there's you know that's it's a I, I feel like it's a laziness thing and I'm not really I'm not trying to be personal with this I'm not trying to be you know um, but there's just a point at which you know why haven't why haven't we done things right why haven't we built the stuff that we talk about why haven't we you know started to build little pieces of the things that we've started that we've been talking about so two things and totally not taking this defensively i, I love what you're saying Pete. <clears throat> one thing is as uh, far as i'm concerned you've built a whole bunch of pieces that we're relying on that that exist in that you're putting on the fungus because <clears throat> they're available on github <clears throat> which is GitHub is right now like our fungus, uh, our fungus infrastructure, right? <clears throat> and um, and you've been doing that now for months and months and months, and we've been trying to figure out how to make that you know practical for Muggles. But but if you're willing to learn how to post to GitHub and use some some tools, like <clears throat> we've got some some piece parts that are ethically and designedly toward the kind of thing we want. They're 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 open, shareable, linkable, et cetera, et cetera. And we're experimenting. And then the second thing is. I am not a coder. I don't know how to do most of the things that you do, Pete. And my answer to your question so far is, I need to figure out how to source some funds into this project so that we're not just asking everybody to be all volunteer and, and, and sort of go do this. I also haven't done a good job of, of maybe leading us toward some junctures where some of this could be sorted out into, okay, so what software do we need and, 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 who, might, and who might be interested in building it? But I thought the flotilla calls were trying to do some of that, and maybe I'm maybe I'm not active enough on that front. Um, and then also, as this thing evolves, and we discuss <clears throat> all sorts of different moving parts like NFTs and and distri and distributed databases and IPFS and whatnot, uh, this vision kind of morphs as it goes, which becomes frustrating over time because it's like, damn, what's the new vision this week, and why didn't we act on that on that vision last time? But I kind of. I kind of want to say um, that we're sort of marked. Uh, I'm going to use a, maybe a bad me metaphor, yet another interesting metaphor from nature. I don't know if everybody knows how bamboo grows, but bamboo basically, the, the bamboo shoot grow, like, like, looks like it's doing nothing for a long time and just kind of sits there, springs up and over the course of a couple of days can grow like 10 meters. Um, uh, some form, some kinds of bamboo. Bamboo sort of sort of marshals its energies and then it goes swing, and suddenly you've got like and 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 once it's grown to its full height, it doesn't keep growing. Like that, like that particular bamboo shoot has done. It's gone to its to to that particular species of bamboo's full height. Um, anyway, I feel like we're sort of like an aspen grove in a bam, a series of bam, a, a bamboo forest, um, both of which are interesting because they're because of their root systems and their connectivity and their kudzu-like nature. Um, above this mycelial web of stuff, right, of, of, of fertile soil. And to me, all the nature metaphors are actually extremely informative for what it is and how we might go about building what we're building. Uh, so, so it feels like some of what we've been doing is marshalling up our en energy to go then, okay, good. So now we've defined a tile and we kind of know what we mean by tile because we've talked through it a bunch of times. Uh, and now we can go do it. Uh, and Pete, I am very aware of how much time you've poured in and how much heart you've poured into OGM uh, over the last 18 months. And it's brilliant and beautiful and has given me vast amounts of pleasure and satisfaction just to be co-working with you on this at the fungus phase. And I want this to be a way you can make a livelihood. And I ain't so good at that. Um, so so I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to do that better. Um, Mark Antoine? Yeah. Um... I think this was, I, I took it as addressed to me, at least probably others, but, uh, and I'll take guilty as charge, as I said. Uh, I've been thinking Apparently about, Mark took I've, it as well, at the same way. Well, yeah, uh, I've uh, been thinking about hyper knowledge for now a few years, uh, quite a few years even. 25? 
four probably. Oh, right? just four. Okay, I thought this is like part of your longer term quest. No, no, it's uh, yeah, but the, the the hyper knowledge part is less than that. Okay. The the the, the before that was idea loom. Um, so yeah, I would say four years I've been on hyper knowledge, uh, and I've been unable to do exactly what you say, which is sit down and write. The reason being that for me, I've seen a lot of projects go on a wrong architecture and wrong start and uh, get into a dead end. And sometimes you can refactor, but sometimes it's so bad that you rewrite. And in a way, hyperknowledge is my reaction to the rewrite of Idealoom, which made quite a few assumptions that I'm now questioning. And I keep doing, which is probably equally annoying to you, <laughs> it, which is saying, yeah, but this doesn't handle this, this doesn't handle that, this doesn't, and, and criticizing a lot of the work you're doing, which I know has value, and I want to be clear about that, but saying this doesn't fulfill my goal, because these are the things I want to solve before I pour the concrete. Uh, but it's also true that it stopped me from producing much. Uh, I am at the point where I need to turn this around. Uh, it's been a dynamic and that's, you know, my problems and my dynamics and I don't want to take over the call with my personal uh, issues. But on the other hand, this is about can we work together? And that means spending more time uh, aligning on goals and means. And I don't, on the one hand, I haven't been able to do my own work because I wasn't clear enough on the means. And I've been both comfortable and uncomfortable criticizing her. Yeah, but this doesn't solve that. Uh, knowing that I don't have a solution either and I don't want to block other people from doing useful stuff for whatever they're trying to solve, which may be different, <laughs> right? Uh, it's valid. But on the other hand, I feel it's not solving the problem I think needs to be solved for our common goals. And I hear you talk and often I realize we have the same goals and you do want to solve the same problem. And we have, uh, but you want to work with the tools you have, which is legit, uh, and get things moving forward. And I want to get a foundation moving. I, just one last thing. Uh, Unfortunately, the flotilla timing is terrible for me. I have not joined the calls. I've tried once. Uh, I did feel a bit, and I'll say it a bit, hey, this is so much an overlap with hyperknowledge. Uh, but on the other hand, it's not, I, I don't own this. Uh, we have to each do our efforts. Uh, but I was a bit like, why are we not working more together on this? Part of it is bad timing for me, <laughs> uh, which I'm just raising now, but I think I, I don't know if I raised it before and that's on me, but it's also, I did not feel quote unquote invited, but I know the door was open uh, and I know we're not trying to solve the problem the same way, but we have a lot to learn from one another, I think, if we got the flotilla idea more and hyper knowledge idea more together. That's um, okay. So we should do that and we should figure out a time that, yeah. that works for everybody. Yeah. Um, and briefly before I switch to, to pass the mic to, to Mark. Um, so in the back of my mind, like since we started, is like, hey, how, how does hyperknowledge fit into the mosaic and how do we fund you to go like take it to fruition? And and I really appreciate and I hope that our, especially um, our mon uh, like the free jury's brain calls, have been helpful to you in evaluating tools and figuring out like uh, which way to go and what, what kind of thing to do. And, and, and I know that it's been like a PhD course for me. So I have learned a ton from our conversations and our just our explorations into this territory. And it's, it's, as, it's as if, sorry to go to nature again, it's as if our conversations are like hyphae tentatively testing new, slightly salty territory to figure out if we should grow in that direction. Um, or we're the explorer ants who are out looking for food sources. And when we find a food source, we're gonna like run back to the nest, dropping our, 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 our tail on the ground now and then so we can find our way back. But, but that's kind of what our conversations feel like, except the territory is really kind of lumpy and thorny and, and experimental. And there's a bunch of different interesting groups doing great work. Some of whom are probably doing fantastic work and we haven't even had the time or connections to you know, pop the lid and go, what's inside? Because because I bet there's some really, I bet they've solved some of our problems and we haven't, we haven't figured out a process even to do that. 
So, so yes, and yes, and uh, yes. Mark? Unmute, lower hand. Excellent. Boy. <laughs> yeah, I know. There should be little toggle switches on the interface, like actual toggles. Yeah, boy. Um, I hear you, Pete. I hear you, Jerry. I hear you, Mark. Um, I'd love to hear from Stacy and Hank. Um, and uh, boy, um, on the other side of um, great artistship is um, that wonderful term from uh, the writer make great art um you know make good art um and if i make good art and i don't show it to anybody is it is it still art um that's a real tough one for me um i've never been one to be a promoter or you know uh go for shows or um but boy am i satisfied with uh a lot of the photography and the poetry and and the art that I've done, um, you know, since you know the teenage years. Uh, Neil Gaiman, yes, make great, make good art. Um, thanks. Um, my mantra is: I don't want to do it alone. And you know, Jerry, when you and I met, and I can look it up uh, easily, but let's just say ten years ago. Um, uh, we had this great conversation and it was like, we're, we're like, you know, five Sigma, you know, close, but we're that far apart at, at the same time. I can't use your tool. You can't use my tool. Um, and, and that was fascinating. And, and it's still, you know, um, my own particular experience. Um, you know, I've uh, hung out with Jacob Cole. I've hung out with, uh, um, the uh, Rome people as they were developing it five years ago, and they're not for me. Um, it's the instrumental part of, say, the Zettelkasten. Um, it was designed for a specific purpose. Um, it certainly um, was very helpful for um, uh, Nicholas Luhmann. Um, it was his own you know, thought system and there are bits and pieces that we can um, learn from, share, uh, create. But uh, you know, for me, it's hyperlists. Um, and <laughs> meme streams was a uh, meme streams.com I sold for ten grand to uh, you know some people, and they were supposed to give it back to me if they ever stopped their uh, um, startup, which did fail. But somehow I didn't get it back. But anyway, um, uh, the conversation that you were referencing, um, I listened to uh, most of the recording, not all of it, but it was just fascinating how basically, yes, we want this global memory. Um, there's this new thing, no documentary, um, Google on the wor world brain, the fight against book scanning plans. I'll post that. Um, it just was released yesterday, apparently on YouTube. Um, yeah, this stuff is just around for ever. Um, you know, they reference HG Wells talking about the world brain um, in, in the what, 30s and 40s. Um, it's, it's here, he says. Um, but uh, uh what I think I need is about a thousand hours of conversation um, and about 2000 hours of coding. Um, and I'd love to, you know, I'm, I'm here for that conversation to basically um, clarify. Um, and what did Jerry say? It was basically, you know, creating a market in that call uh, two weeks ago. There are people that go out and are able to say, aha, here's a market, I'm going to document it, I'm going to create it, I'm going to basically, you know, make this meme into some kind of social structure that surpasses a meme and becomes, you know, the type of things 
that people actually do. Because we're talking about, as I understand it, changing personal behavior from ingesting fondle slab media to actually doing writing oneself um, on a consistent and constant way in that the side effect could be of benefit for other people. Over to Pete. Um, before going to Pete, I just wanna say that one of my visions, a, a couple of visions of what OGM might be, could be, one of them is sort of like cleaner fish or cleaner shrimp you know, rasses or shrimp uh, where some, some, some other entity pulls up and we're like, boom, boom, boom. And then I remember the scene from Cars <clears throat> where Guido does the pit stop. And I'm like, I want OGM to be able to do that. And I'd like to make it so that all of us can be really excited to do that for an entity, a connect, you know, or the connector and the things that they're, they're sort of all about uh, and, and add the, like turbocharge the vehicle, not just sort of send it off with new tires and, and, and a full tank, but actually send them off with a better vision of what they're doing, how they connect to the rest of it, uh, sharing their data, all that kind of thing. So uh, over to you in the booth, Pete, and love Fondle Slab Media. That just is awesome. Great conversation. And thanks, Mark. That was really good. Um, uh, um, I, I, I want to say this, I, well, so Mark, you, you said an interesting thing there. You, you, um, you, uh, you flipped the quote a little bit to, uh, from real artistship to great artistship. Um, and it made me think, uh, that, um, there's an interesting difference between great and real, you know, in that saying, and, you know, it's, it's an overcompressed saying, it's a, a, a quip, but, um, I, I, I would also say, like, you know, when I think of real artist ship um, uh, and that we should be doing more of it, I actually think about myself. Um, and the reason I'm thinking about that quote in the past couple of days, it turns out it, it was actually about Holochain. Um, uh, we got to talking, um, actually it was Zeke, I think, Zeke and, and Wendy McLean um, are excited about building stuff and they're talking about holochain and 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 um i i have a bit of frustration with the, the hollow folks because i ordered a hollow nano uh hollow port nano um i don't know years ago and then earlier this year it's like well it's not going to work out guys we're not going to be able to ship the hollow hollow port nanos anytime soon you know covid yada 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 and i'm like okay whatever so then they said but you can upgrade for another you know a few hundred dollars you can buy the the next the next best thing that or the, the a better thing right and i'm like okay so that was i don't know three four or five months ago and so i suckered in for that and and then i'm like i haven't heard from these people since you know <laughs> so hollow chain is this cool thing and there may be a real pony in there but i i i'm i and i'm, I'm a little bit bitter but hurt from um my my experience with the hardware thing but it made me think you know there's there's another guy who was a visionary um and was in the hardware business um named steve jobs and you know he said real artistship and the the meaning of that phrase to me is that like you know you can pontificate about cool stuff as much as you want but you know if you're not shipping hardware you're not a real artist which is different from a great artist i think there i i, I don't want to preclude i don't want to say that everybody should be shipping um i think there are certainly people who should be doing great art um and sometimes sometimes maybe um every, everybody sees it maybe sometimes one or two people see it maybe sometimes no people see it i think that's great um now i'm beholden also to mention a cool i i follow uh google has learned that i i'm a sucker for archaeological news so they feed me archaeological news um, on my phone um uh super cool article recently about um uh a paper somebody somebody found uh, handprints and footprints um made in mud uh like two hundred thousand years ago um and they called it art um and then they had to go through a whole explanation in the paper you know why would you call this handprints and footprints 
um, art, um, it, it turns out that they're, they're purposely um, set. You can tell that the, the people engaged in it, there were probably two people, then they were probably kids. Um, they were purposely placing things on the surface. It wasn't just walking and it wasn't just playing around and doing something. They were actually purposely placed. So the authors of the article said, you know, this, uh, we're, we're going to call this an example of art because it was purpose play, purposeful placement. Um, and what that does, the, the previously earliest known art by uh, Homo uh, was 40,000 years ago. So they just pushed that back 160,000 years or so. Um, uh, anyway, sorry, archaeology geek. Um, so I think great art is cool, and I don't want to preclude us from doing great art, um, even if it's just handprints and footprints placed together that somebody's going to find in 200,000 years. That's cool. Um, but there's another thing, too, where when we want to make a thumbprint on the world, when we actually want to make change in the world, we actually have to ship stuff. Um, so uh, first it was, I was thinking about hollow chain, you know, it's like, damn guys, just get your, get your stuff together and ship something. I'm over here on Tezos, uh, having a blast with the NFT marketplace, right? Um, why isn't there an NFT marketplace on hollow chain? Um, and then, you know, it rolls over mo the next victim of this is me, you know, there's, I, I have shipped some cool things in the past year and a half. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that I haven't shipped. And, you know, a lot of the reason for that is I, I have to kind of chalk it up to laziness, you know. Um, uh, and I don't know, it was a way of kind of kicking myself in the rear. And so I think OGM has that same thing. You know, we we don't harvest our own materials very well. We we have lots of dreams. We don't just put things together. Um, Mark Antoine and I have not figured out how to have it such that he can be coming to Flotel calls at some point in the week. Um, so we should just start doing it. And and lastly, the in the real artist ship thing, um, there there are things, and maybe Mark Antoine is or and maybe Mark Carranza is or isn't on the path of you have to just sit with this thing for 20 or 30 years until it turns into a thing and it doesn't make sense to um uh it doesn't make sense to ship before that that might be true um the you know the 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 opposite thing is that some things you can just chip away at, right? Um, so the the link I just posted was to Henrik Nyberg's um, classic uh, agile product development thing. Um, you know, you you make a simple thing. You even if you want to make a complicated thing, you know that you can't ship the complicated thing right away. So you build a small thing that that. Um, uh, that satisfies a tiny part of the use case poorly, right? And then you iterate, you, you make it a little bit bigger part of the use case and less poorly. And you continue that iterate, iterative product development cycle until you're shipping cool stuff, right? Um, so I, I'm all for great artists don't ship and they, they make great art. I think that's cool. And there's certainly a place in OGM for real artists to ship and they ship stuff that's not not necessarily great at the beginning. Um, and then you come out, you know, uh, one year, five years, 10 years later with something like the all the Apple computer line, right? Or the all the iPhone line, which changes the world, right? So, you know, you can, you can pick to be lazy <laughs> or you can pick to build stuff and get it out into the world. And, you know. Um, the Go ahead. Uh, brief comment before passing to you, Mark Antoine. It's hard to imagine the world pre-iPhone. Like 2007 is the iPhone, and few people can imagine life before smartphones. Go ahead. Yes, actually, iPhone's interesting because it's for me. It's also a good example of Apple sat on it until it could be perfect, and that's what they do all the time. <laughs> they don't ship early. They don't. They ship. They, they do iterative improvement after that. The Newton, they don't was, the, Newton, the Newton was shipping early. Yeah, and 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 it was a, it was an absolute failure. Right. But uh, the Jobs Apple, I should have said, and now uh, it's not Jobs Apple anymore, but it's, it's kept that ethos. The post post second coming of Jobs Apple, totally never shipped early. And the, the, the diagram about MVP, and I do. By the way, I have a complex relationship with shipping early, shipping often, because God, I do understand the value of iterating. And I do see the value of 
not pontificating. You're absolutely right, Pete. Uh, we do need to get things out to understand, to experiment. And when I say it's a lab, well, lab is about doing experiments and on imperfect things. I 100%. And on the other hand, sometimes something is not ready and you'll spend time improving something that is on a bad plan and you can improve your roller sk skater all you want, it won't lead you to the car. Like this diagram gives the illusion that you can Which incrementally diagram? improve the skateboard into the car. And I don't believe it for a second. Each is its own line of evolution. <laughs> and, and they have to which, be developed. Yeah, which, 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 which is which totally diagram? fine. Um, Nyberg's uh, skateboard to car. Um, oh, okay. Agile, agile illustration. So okay. that, that's the, the lesson there is actually that you develop the, the different products. You're, you're slicing off um, you're slicing off use cases. You're, so you're not developing the skateboard is not a car. The skateboard gets you from one place to another place faster than your feet do, um, which is kind of the use case of the car. Um, uh, and, so and, and you, Agile, Agile was mostly developed in banks with ridiculous resources and huge teams. So they could develop five product lines at the same time. No, seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's also part of the equation. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and uh, telecoms, which are even worse than banks. Um, but, but there are also just times when the, you know, ex expending the, the complexity and the resources to get five different products that incrementally move towards a, a better thing. Um, is productive, right, in a way that uh, involves other people and can get you to where you're going, even though it's, you know, And, and, and by the way, efficient. I agree we need to have multiple products. I just hope we can have a common road and common signalization for all these vehicles. And for me, that's the <laughs> what hyperknowledge is about. Mm -hmm. Anyway, stay, sorry. Um, so Jerry, then Stacy. Um, and I've got a bunch of things I want to throw in the conversation. Uh, first, the quote is make good art, not great art. And there's a whole interesting thread about quantity, not quality. There's the, <clears throat> the pottery professor who basically told half of his class, I want you to spend the entire term making your best work, like this one piece. And he told the other half of the class, I want you to make as many pieces as you possibly can generate this, this semester, this quarter. And guess whose pots were more interesting, better, whatever, whatever. It's the people who had churned out quantity, not quality. Um, and so a piece of this is just like ship early, uh, release early release often, which is actually the, the, the open source quote principle, which I like a, a ton. And can we look at our calls? Sorry, I've been posting these calls on YouTube. We've been having really fascinating conversations. I don't know about y'all, but I've been learning a whole bunch and my, my view of the world has shifted through these conversations. I believe this is work product in a modern sense. I believe that, that what we're doing is working in public and it's a form of, it's a, it's a, it's a wimpy form of work product, but it's, a, but it's a thing, like it's an artifact. And, 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 and an ordinary muggle faced with like, like the, the vast world of whatever would be like, you all put on a show. In fact, you put on five shows a week uh, and, and, and post, you know, publish them all and all that kind of stuff. But I don't, and I don't want to overplay that. Um, but I'm also curating all the calls that I'm on, I'm curating into this quirky map, which is imprisoned in this proprietary software, which I'm trying to release into the world as a sourdough starter for the big map, but it ain't yet because I don't have a, a vine to swing to because there's no new tool yet uh, that we've built. Um, and then finally, um, hey, Pete, wow, I'm really interested in taking snapshots of our journey and turning them into NFTs and seeing if anybody will buy them. Is there an easy way to do that, to prototype that? Because I would love to do that. I, I, I'm like, I, I, think, I think that to, to my mind, the most positive light to shine on NFTs is that they allow people to spend some money supporting a community that is doing some work, maybe art. Um, the, the worst part of NFTs is that somebody wants proprietary ownership over an artifact and wants to disappear it from the world. It's the opposite approach. But the idea that somebody might want to be initial funders, investors, in the big fungus and that subsequent sales of that artifact can funnel money back to the community building the big fungus excites me no end. And if we could do the smallest, lightest thing that would make that possible, I am all in on that experiment as well among the other 50 things I'd like to do and haven't done yet. But, um, but anyway, that, that's my, my last thought on that. So Stacy then Pete. So not to put Pete on the spot, it's sort of a rhetorical question, 
but I would ask, is it laziness or is it a part of you that's actually honoring who you are as a person and feeding yourself? Because seriously, that's why I come to these calls because I, I see your frustration and I see it everywhere. And I think that there is a way that if we were restructured, you were able, you would be able to do both. And just as a simple example, I had um, a call with Jerry where I proposed something, not so much because I wanted to create what I was proposing, but because I thought if that's the direction, it would lead to a number of smaller actions that would be necessary to go there. And I wound up getting, I don't know if you saw the um, message from Bentley, but he had watched where at the end, we I sort of said, you know, a beginner's call, which is a social kind of call where you know that's why you're going to discuss what are the values we want to start creating. And he said, hey, I'm working on something really similar. I'd like to be involved in that call. And I think that those kind of beginner's calls, first of all, they separate what you're going to do. But I think everybody on this call agrees that the more you talk and listen to people, the more your own thinking takes off in different ways. So I just wanted to you know, say that may not be laziness. Maybe we need to do a little bit more honoring of our souls because look at the world the way it is now. I mean, Jerry, you said on a different call how we've separated work and play. I think that's a big problem. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, let me reply to Stacy real quick and then to you, Pete. Um, first, thanks for reminding me about that. And I had forgotten that snippet of, of, of conversation with Bentley. And uh, it, uh, please bring it bring it back in so that as we do stuff, it, it actually turns into a thing. And then second, one of the things I really enjoyed about our call together, that I think that call, um, is that I was sort of trying to get to the point of, okay, Stacy, so would you like to run a show? Would you like to have be a host of a show and blah, 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 blah. And we talked through it to the point where I think where we ended up was um, a really nice starting point might be um, that Stacy, you're a correspondent for Weaving the World and that some of the shows are some of the work and some of the conversations that you spark and bring into it. And in doing so, you don't have to build the infrastructure of a show and do all of this, the different moving parts of it, but you can bring in the, the experiments that you're thinking about, uh, the game ideas and so forth, and we can play them out in some interesting way. And I was really happy with that because at the end of that call, I felt like, I felt like I understood now how to bring you into the, the puzzle that we're busy building uh, and, and, and a, in a role that would be satisfying to you and would play out the kinds of things that you envision um, doing. Does that, does that work right for what your memory? Yes, that's, I mean, look, I'll be really honest. My biggest hesitation is I don't wanna be the person that, that plans the party and then nobody shows up. So I like to know that I have you know, support um, you got that's, that's the truth. <laughs> cool. Um, Pete, and then we're over a little over an hour, so we should start to wrap with Pete. Um, thanks. Thanks for asking the question, Stacey. And, and there's certainly over the past, you know, year and a half or something like that, um, I have appreciated the process of, of uh, all of us honoring our, you know, seeking out um, uh, uncertainty and not, not knowing. Um, uh, it's been a wonderfully generative time uh, for a lot of those things. Um, Mark said something interesting in the chat. Hesitation is actually different from procrastination. Um, a, a diagnosis, another diagnosis I have is that we procrastinate. We are literally lazy. Um, and a good example is, Jerry, the work product that we've got um, of all the calls that we have. Um, uh, it would be just just sitting down and doing the work to mine some of that. And for me, it would be creating a wiki, right? Creating diagrams. Um, what, you know, what issues have we talked about over the past year and a half? Um, why do we think they're important? How are they interconnected? That's literally, you know, like a few hours of work that none of us is doing. And, and it's hard for me to, and, and I think, I think it's not just that we're blind to it, that we don't know that the work is there. I think that we do know the work is there um, and that we could do it. And, you know, I, 
there's a whole bunch of you know we could we could get into nitty gritty details of of pressing out kind of the psychology of procrastination and I think pro productive procrastination is really valuable but there's also just times when it's like cleaning the dishes you know uh, washing the dishes or vacuuming the floors or something like that it's like you know I could just leave those dishes in the kitchen and I could just narrow down to the one glass and the one plate and the one fork and spoon that I've got and I can kind of just rinse those and let the rest of the stuff pile up and it turns out that the devil's not going to come eat me um, my mom and dad aren't going to come and spank me you know yes, they will <laughs> they're dead man I you know oh good point but my, be my dad is not ghost in the kitchen his heart um, my dad also it's his runs bachelor life now um, without my mom so um, he's he's got his one plate and his one uh, anyway so um, and and this kind of telescopes for me right it's it's like even even during a meeting we we do a good job of kind of like we, we don't you know we we could but we don't we've talked about but we don't um, setting aside a quarter of the call at the end of the call to just you know just hit the high points of the call we could do that and we don't um, and to me it feels like that same thing you know I don't want to do the dishes it's not fun I you know I don't want to vacuum today because it's not fun and you know it's not going to be the, the end of the world if we don't um, but but what you find kind of if we were more productive in many ways right harvesting our stuff or building the little pieces uh, the, the little prototypes that we talk about building if we did that stuff you get that sense of accomplishment you walk into the kitchen you go oh my god look at the kitchen i actually have a nice kitchen it's sparkling it's clean it's wonderful um uh so that we're, we cheat ourselves out of that accomplishment um when we are procrastinating we're just lazy i'm gonna i'm gonna skip now to a different topic the nft thing um okay. i cracked it i know what to do um, the thing isn't to sell uh, NFT artifacts of, you know, like we could NFT up, you know, a, a YouTube call or this. Actually, probably what you would do is NFT up, you know, 30 seconds of somebody saying something brilliant or something like that. Um, the, the realization or that I, I, had a, I had a good explanation for Howard. Uh, Jerry and I have a friend, Howard, on a different list. Um, uh, where I talked about, you know, being in the NFT marketplace and Howard says, so Pete, cool stuff on your NFT page. Um, I could even imagine myself buying some of it. What do, what am I actually buying when I buy one of your NFT things? Um, so, um, so I wrote a, a piece that I need to distribute better. Um, I've been lazy and haven't distributed it better or, or busy. I've been too busy to distribute it better. Um, but basically what I said, um, uh, inspired by the language used in the, uh, in the UI of the uh, NFT marketplace I'm, I'm playing with, uh, Hiko Nook, um, uh, they don't use buy and sell, they use collect and swap. Um, and I realized that you can look at the NFT, the, the whole NFT phenomenon is widespread and there's lots of stuff going on. There's certainly people buying and selling and there's certainly people just looking for a quick flip and things like that. But Hikuk Nook is, is cooler because it's smaller, it's not so hyper um, fast charged. Um, and it feels to me more like in the olden days on Flickr when we used to have fun with Flickr and, and photos, digital photos and the, the dawn of the age of digital photos. Um, we, we made hashtags, we, we collected things into groups and albums. Um, we played with each, each other's you know, uh, photos. And, and I can at least, uh, Hikukna is small enough that I can feel like I'm playing and what I'm doing is curating a collection. So when I'm, you know, in the olden days, I would say I'm buying somebody's piece of art and, and with digital art, you're actually not buying the piece itself because you can just copy the file and then you, you, you have it as much as anybody else has it. What you're buying is the artist's signature. The artist has, you know, stamped a, a digital certificate that says, you know, I, I and, and then sold or swapped to you, you know, the right to own this thing. And when, when I think of it as collecting and swapping, 
Um, it feels a little bit like baseball cards or a little bit like enamel pins. Um, um, and there's a, a thing that humans do, at least some humans, um, just like to collect things. They like to collect series of things. They like to, you know, fill out a collection. They like to swap with another, you know, I've got this, this one and you've got that one. Could we swap? There's a whole bunch of just social stuff that, that humans like to do around uh, a marketplace. I used to do this in the fifth grade with marbles. Um, we had this amazing marble gallery um, uh, out on the playground and in uh, lunchtime and it was a blast um you know big ones small ones the the pearlies and uh you know the fancy all the fancy ones and stuff like that um uh by the way i think that's when humans are, are really being human that's a, a good human activity marketplaces and you know swaps and things like that um rather than the stock market and the weird derivative games that we you know we play with computers and stuff like that that's not human um Anyway, in this collecting and swapping thing, um, uh, I would, I would, if if I had, uh, if I had a grant, <laughs> if I had a grant, I, I'm not thinking of this uh, because I want the money to pay for the grant. But I, I was like, okay, here's what you would build. You could rebuild the NFT marketplace to be a little bit different. Right now, the marketplace that I'm playing in is optimized for, for collecting and swapping art. And, and maybe again, I, you know, the thing that I do when I'm collecting art is not that I'm buying it to enclose it or buying it so that I can flip it. What I'm doing is I'm saying, look at me, I've got this collection of stuff on this marketplace. This is me curating you know, the, the maelstrom of, of stuff. And on my creations page, this is me creating stuff um, that I want to share into this, this, this bazaar, right? Um, what if we did that with projects too? Uh, what if we had an NFT um, in a marketplace of projects instead of art? Um, and uh, just like you're an, an angel investor, if you're the person who bets on massive wiki early on, you know, you, you get the, a big chunk of the massive wiki project collection, right? Um, and you're not doing this transactional thing where, um, uh, you know, if, if I pay $10,000 uh, into this startup, or if I pay $100,000 into this startup, they, they burn it on, on labor and, and marketing costs and stuff like that. And then I get to sell my investment for a million dollars. That's not what I'm talking about. It's like, what if I was the person who had invested in this cool project? What if I, ha what if I had been the person who invested in weaving the world early on, right? Um, it would be super gratifying to come back a year later or two years later, four years later and say, hey, look, I invested in Weaving the World in 2021. Um, I, I collected Weaving the World and, you know, the next three or four from this guy, Jerry Mikulski. Um, uh, look, Jerry, you know, subdivided Weaving the World into this uh, sub projects thing. Um, and, you know, I was the first investor. I was the, the second investor in Weaving the World. So there's, um, I, I think there's something to do there. It, it would be building, I, ideally, you would build a new marketplace. The marketplace would have a little bit different rules in the way it, the way it works. Um, you could bootstrap off of uh, the, the DAP contracts for, um, for Hikiknuk, actually, I think you could. Um, uh, but you would change the rules of the game a little bit so that it, it's more obvious that you're you're curating your and you're voting for and you're you know you're early in um, collecting you know uh, Stacy doing her part of weaving the world uh, or Mark doing MX or you know whatever. I have a lot to add back into the conversation with apologies that we're running well over our hour. Um, and I also would love to hear from Stacey Hank, Mark and Mark and Con. Um, so a couple things, uh, back to what you were saying about automating the artifacts from our calls. I, I would love that, but my higher priority for you, Pete, is a muggle-friendly front-end to massive. 
And I, I'd rather I'd rather ask you and, and, and fund you to build that than have you do anything else around the other stuff. We had Max Harper early, like months ago, who was dropped off the calls, but he went and he's a Miro coder and he took one of our call transcripts and went boop, boop, boop. And I was like, that is magic. How do we do more of that? Then at some point, Charles asked me, hey, aren't we getting transcripts? And I'm like, yep. So I, I went back and I looked through all the, I went back through all bunch of folders and I put all the transcripts in a, in a Google Drive and I've stopped doing that because nobody's using it and it's extra labor for me. And I would love, I would love to be able to point to a Zoom call and say, hey, how, here's a pipeline script that basically downloads the Zoom call, does some simple editing, adds an intro and an outro, uh, takes the transcript, puts it over here into an, its own pipeline so that six people do different things with a transcript, and that just turns into rocket fuel, and then gets put into the, the, the URL shredder or chainsaw uh, so that the links that happen in the call are over here and easily linked, and all of this is synced back to the video. Uh, and I would just be over the moon for that, and I think that's a project tile to describe, right? Because then we're actually using our artifacts. The, the, the reason I'm not that worried right now is that the artifacts are at least, we've got the file, they're in cyberspace, the, 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 the bare bones things are sort of available. So I'm not too worried about that, but I would love all of that. Um, then I wrote down like, uh, maybe what we need to do is build our own Hick at Nunk. It's not just float an, an artifact. And one of my problems with Hick at Nunk in particular is that uh, algorithmically generated art leaves me completely cold. I'm like I'm like frozen cold from what I see, and then stupid pixel art like nouns. Dot what the fuck? Uh, I think it's nouns or noun. I don't remember which, whether it's singular or plural. But you go there and like the thing they're selling for um, uh, 150 ETH, which is a lot of money, um, is stupid. Like just asinine, stupid, and it makes the whole market look smell bad and look bad. And I'm like, these people are just trying to flip properties and they're saying, hey, here's a funny thing. And to me, it's gonna poison the whole well. And, and to me, the whole thing you just said, I don't think people are buying the signature. I think they're saying, I would like to be identified as the initial backer of this movement, artist, creative soul, as you just said. And I think that people would love to be the first backers of the big fungus. And I know that sounds weird, but if we created a market called the big fungus, and then had artifacts in that market that were real, that were tied to, and here's an artifact that came out of our conversation with Jim Rutt and th those people, or Bio Okamolafe. We went and visited Bio. Then here's a, here's a collage from the end of that call with two snippets that were great from that call. And that is an artifact that is actually a meaningful milepost in the progress of civilization someday a thousand years ago when archeologists try to find all the files that we lost because of the EMP that wiped everything out. Um, that will be a, a thing that will be important. And, and so I would love to do that. Um, and then uh, the, my, one of my favorite lines, Shakespeare in Love is, is one of my favorite movies in the world. And one of my favorite lines from there is like the, the backer who says, I'm the money. And he's the one who's nervous and wants, wants a role in the play and, and floods his lines and, and so forth. But it's just a, a brilliant movie. But, but we need to give a role for people who want to back civilization. Right, and I think that's the potential here. It's like you're not backing and flipping these stupid little like pixel art or, or other sorts of things. You're actually backing movement of, of forward progress of, of humans making sense of the world. And I think that's really compelling. And Hen H E N is uh, the shorthand for Hick et Nook for everybody looking at the chat. Um, I think we should have wrapping thoughts and and uh, end our call. This has been juicy and generative in the way that our best calls are. And I really appreciate that. So anybody with some, want to put a bow on our, our conversation? Stacey. Yeah, I just want to say the first person you mentioned that showed you what he had created, I would love to see a short clip of what that looks like. It would be helpful so that if we're ever recognizing what you want, we, I, you know, because otherwise I have no idea what that looks like. Uh, I think, do you mean Max Harper's use yes. of the transcript? I believe yes. that Miro board is still alive. So I'll find the, I'll find the Miro board and uh, share it back with you. That would I'll be great. In, I'll, I'll put it in the Mattermost chat for Build OGM. Perfect. And the other thing is when we talk about pop-up calls, I think what Pete just talked about would be a great pop-up call to have. Totally agree. Totally agree. Hank, Hank in the cave. Yeah. Okay. 
I put a lot of my thoughts in the in the chat because I enjoy listening to to how you guys talk about it. But I, I think I could say I'm I'm really in line with with Pete during this call. Uh, on the on the the prototyping aspect, it doesn't have to be perfect to to get it out into some iterative tests first with uh, OGMers and then maybe carefully outside OGM. Uh, that's how you sharpen your idea. That's how ideas really get sharpened. Uh, great art is only recognized as great art afterwards, usually. So you produce what you produce. And I, I really like, Jerry, I really like your example of the, uh, the experiment with uh, make as many ideas as, as you can that, that meets, that uh, goes along with my experience as well. And finally, the last thing that I put into the, the the, the chat of, of uh, Pete's idea of people looking back and saying, oh, I was the first investor, I was the fourth investor. That, that really does work. And I think there's lots of people who want to invest. And in, in, in part of this uh, positive cartography uh, project I'm doing, some one of my chief collaborators is doing something totally her own. Uh, with dream weaving, whatever that means, I'll find. <laughs> I'll see it a little uh, maybe tomorrow. But she's got she she got an idea. She she put out a call. She's got a uh, lot of small scale investors already. There's people who want to take it on the second or third iteration into Africa, and that's because she put out the idea. So if you don't put out your ideas, you never know who's going to buy them. So I totally uh, in favor of putting out ideas and seeing what emerges. That's awesome, thank you. Um, thank you, Hank. Anybody else with uh, closing words? This has been super juicy productive, thank you. Uh... May, may I just ask one question? Because in yesterday's call, Pete, you referenced the Mattermost mapping channel. Where do I find that? <laughs> ah, Maps and Mapping uh, is a channel in Mattermost, and Peter, I will put a link to it in the chat here. Oh, terrific. Thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, I have one last thing, uh, just uh, directly to Marc Antoine. Marc Antoine, I got you confused with uh, Mark Thibault. I've got, I'm confusing my marks. Um, <laughs> so Does that mean you're off the mark? I am off the mark and I'm missing the mark as well. Um, the original definition of sin, but uh, basically I'm looking for the uh, uh, a huge JSON file of Jerry's brain um, in my, uh, and I'll connect with you on uh, Mattermost, um, but basically uh, uh, I want to play with uh, the data. Um, my own data is, uh, what is it, 2.5 million uh, records, and so I can easily slurp in. Or I actually I'd keep them separate. But That'd be like an appetizer for your brain. Yeah, yeah, just nah. But uh, it, it's it's serious work that that you and I do, and it's it's weird work. It's it's noticing and and curating. And yeah, feeding the fungus. Um, did you read the uh, and? Uh, uh, come on, brain. And Hank, Not... Hank, the channel uh, is uh, Pete just posted the link to the channel in the chat right, just while, while Mark is talking. Keep going. Yeah, Mark. I see it there. Um, entangled, uh, Sheldrake, entangled, uh, entangled life. How fungi make our worlds? I have not. Can you uh, post the link to it? I, I will post the link to it. Perfect. Thank you. Um, um, I'm also highly struck and really enjoying. Hank's raised hand in the Zoom next to the handprint on the oh. back behind him, <laughs> which is making me realize that all those handprints in all the caves were probably early Zoom, I need attention kind of marks. Like, wow. we have just we have just decoded why the damned hands are in all those caves. This was Fantastic. all Zoom. I gotta just say, checking that you're like a, reading the, the chat mark, because I, please, please, <laughs> reading what the chat uh oh so uh My, because i uh i'm easier i i, I sometimes miss messages in the mattermost 
Uh, oh. So I put my email. I, it's easier for me to get, it's easier to get me by email. Got it. parent at acm.org or gmail.com or conversions.com. There's quite a few, but anyway. Exactly. Um, and, and Mark, who's the, is it uh, Sheldrake? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Merlin Sheldrake. Merlin, his son. Okay. Yes, tangled by how fungi makes our worlds. I thought that's where you go. We're getting that stuff um, about the big fungus. Uh, so it comes from lots of different places. Um, so I've got secrets of the wood wide web. Yeah, he's. Uh, I've got him here. I've got him in my brain, uh, but he's not. I don't know that his. I don't know that his work is the the general source. There's a whole bunch of. Uh, sure. Uh, of fungal, you know, there's a uh, Paul Stamets and a, and a bunch of others uh, doing really cool stuff. There's a radical mycologist who lives in Portland, uh, whose speech I missed at a at a mushroom at a mushroom exhibition a couple of years ago here in Portland. That was really really cool. Uh, so imagine going into an octagonal room where there's tables set up in the middle, sort of uh, 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 tables set in the middle facing out. Uh, each table larger than a pool table. Each table loaded with different fungi fresh out of the field, all of them fresh, live samples, uh, you know, so six different tables all facing in and, and labeled. And so, so the collectors had shown up, piled in all their samples, sorted them kind of so that they were kind of similar, insanely beautiful. Uh, it was just, just a, a remarkable thing. And then there were, there were people giving talks and all that. And we got there late enough that I missed the radical mycologist talk. Um, so thank you all. You complete me. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.